remember is you left and right. Okay, right you are. No left. Motoring, sponsored by Halfords. On today's show, James samples two 70s supercars. Richard thrashes some spicier minis. And I get sideways in the latest Lamborghini. Now, don't worry, we have got some minis in the programme as well, but it is Lamborghini's 40th anniversary this year. So we thought it would be a good idea to have a look at some of the cars they made over the years and do a bit of a tribute to the maddest car company of them all. as we know it today. More than that, it's where the modern supercar begins. It's the first, the daddy, the Mura. Those seven impetuous young engineers were about to spark a revolution. Until then, all seriously fast cars had their big, heavy engines here at the front. But the Mura had its V12 here in the middle, setting the template for all future supercars. They also mounted the engine sideways rather than lengthways to keep the car compact. Mind you, they nicked that idea from the Mini but we'll let him have that one. There was other radical stuff that didn't see the light of day. The first design had a three-seater layout, like a McLaren F1, and it had a glass engine cover, like a Ferrari 360. This did make it, though, the shape of the doors. See? They're supposed to look like the horns of a bull. Nice. <laughs> and ingenious it may have been. But in terms of driving, you were still at the wheel of a bit of a dog's breakfast. The fuel tank was over the front wheels, so as it ran low on fuel, it went light at the front end, which meant you couldn't steer. Nice touch, that. Keeps you on your toes. The interior is, well, tiny, and every now and again the carburettors would spit petrol onto the hot engine, and the whole thing would go up in flames. It is not an easy car. Hard oh, to drive. <laughs> but it sounds 